Hello, today is Saturday and I'm going to talk to you about one of my favorite historical events, which seems really lame, but if you don't know what the Cuban Missile Crisis is, here's your chance to find out about it. Um, the, commu can, uh, the Cuban Missile Crisis is considered one of the major confrontations of the Cold War, um, and it was also considered a turning point in the Cold War as well, because it was the closest time that the Cold War could have gone south and was the first time that there was a real threat of mutually assured destruction, which is where lots of large-scale weapons, mostly like nukes and stuff like that, would be used, and both sides would have like irrevocable damage, because we both had just enough, we had so many nukes on both sides, we'd just obliterate each other, and there'd be no point in starting the war in the first place. Um, so it takes place during the Cold War, and there's not really a good way to explain the Cold War other than there was the U.S. and the Soviet Union, and they didn't agree on a lot of different things. And so um, that's all I'm going to really say about it, because it's very complicated to try to explain the Cold War on its own. So I'm just going to kind of go through and talk about the different things that happened and what kind of built up to it as well. So Cuba had gone through regime change, and they were um, under Castro at the time, and uh, the U.S. did not like that, and so they were mucking about and trying to overthrow um, Castro's government through... They had the Bay of Pigs massacre, which did not end well for the U.S., and neither did Operation Mongoose, and so they still had Castro in power, and the U.S. is like, well, whatever, crap, we can't really do much, and little did the U.S. know that um, the premier of the USSR, um, Khrushchev, had proposed to Castro to move... Um, Soviet missiles into Cuba, because then they would be like, well, in the future, the U.S. won't invade, because they'll see that you have missiles, they can shoot at them. And so the U.S. finally noticed these missiles in on uh, October 14th, 1962, um, and they, these, they were taken by photos from U-2 planes, which fly really, really high, and um, they were like, oh, hey, look, whoa, there's big missiles there, we should probably take care of those. Um, and so they were, like, back then, obviously, photos took you to go and get them developed and stuff, and so they got them to the president on October 15th, which was the beginning of, uh, the 13-day crisis, um, and Kennedy, who was the current president, uh, contemplated attacking Cuba, and he, there were lots and lots and lots of meetings about what to do, um, but they opted for a military blockade, but they called it a quarantine for various reasons, because they didn't want everyone to be all freaking out, because there was, you know, um, military involvement and stuff like that, um, and they announced that the U.S. wouldn't allow offensive missiles to be delivered to Cuba, the USSR had to dismantle any military missile bases that they had in Cuba and send them back to Russia, but at the time they knew that the USSR wouldn't agree to these conditions, but they were hoping that the uh, Russian government, not Russian, that, sorry, the USSR government would agree that there wouldn't be any military confrontation, and then so they would agree to those terms, so it would not be a military confrontation. However, they knew that it was very, very, very unlikely that that would be the case. Um, and so, this goes on for a while, and they, there's communications back and forth trying to figure out what to do, and um, on October 24th, um, so like a while later, Khrushchev sends a letter to JFK and that says, you know, this blockade you set up, it's kind of an act of aggression and it might lead to nuclear war. So the U.S. is very flustered and like, oh, what are we going to do? And so, however, the important thing about that, though, is that the U.S. had also received through back channels that weren't public that um, Khrushchev wanted to, like, kind of make a deal and, like, you know, we can't really let everyone know that we want to, like, figure this out with you, but we kind of want to reach an agreement. And so, and then at the same time, though, the U.S. was also dealing with uh, USSR naval ships that were trying to run their blockade, which eventually left, meant, let, uh, led to the U.S. ships, like, sending warning shots over their bows and also ended up firing on them, which was not so great for their communication, um, but it proved that the U.S. was indeed going to hold their blockade, and that was after moving it back already. Um, and then on the 27th of October, the U.S. had a, another, they were still flying U-2 planes over the top, 
And um, there was a plane that got shot down by Soviet missiles, and the U.S. government was like, you know, now we've had one guy die, we really need to get a hold of this and uh, take control and kind of figure out what we're going to do. And so on the 28th, um, they were able to reach an agreement with, um, with the Soviets, and publicly... The Soviets announced that, they, announced that they would dismantle their missiles in Cuba and return them to the Soviet Union. And on the way, they would let the UN verify them and say, yes, these are the missiles and they're going back. And um, and also publicly, the U.S. promised that they would never invade Cuba, which seems like a very poor trade-off for the Soviets. However, secretly, this agreement also included that the U.S. would, in six months, they would dismantle a bunch of uh, missiles in Turkey and Italy, and so, but, you know, if they're six months apart, of course they're not going to be related, so the public would never know, um, but it also, it removes some of the threat from the Soviet Union and also from the U.S., and so that was the agreement that they reached, um, and that was the end of the crisis, and so if you think, if you were interested in this, then you could watch the movie 13 Days with Kevin Costner in it, it's good. However, Kevin Costner is supposed to play a person from Boston, and his accent is horrible. Um, um, yeah, this is kind of a long video, but I hope you learned something. And, um, yeah, have a great day, and we'll see what's in store for tomorrow. Bye!